you remember last time we were discussing um, different ways that we could present information about Martin Luther King Jr. if our job was to create, say, a web page for high school students. And <clears throat> we explored a couple of options. Uh, three alternatives. And we talked about the respective advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of each. Today what, we, what, what I want to do is I want to kind of wrap up this discussion by asking you, are there other things that we could do instead of the videos or the text? And then I want to come to some conclusion about um, whether you know, how we would do this. If we were going to uh, present this, what pieces of content we would want to put on our, uh, on our um, page. So, <clears throat> the options that we had last time, one of them was the full text of the speech. One was full video. And one was video excerpt. We mentioned as far as respective advantages and disadvantages, the full text would be beneficial, first of all, for people that, that can't hear. The video would not be as meaningful. It would also be um, good or, or better to get like the exact wording of things. If you were, for example, going to quote the speech, to get the exact wording, it would be better to have the text than to try to have to hear it and transcribe it. Um, the video, uh, or I'm sorry, the text would be better to um, get the, um, well, that's okay, uh, to get the, um, uh, if there was trouble hearing a word because of the, the audio quality or, or, or whatever reason, um, the full text might be beneficial. Um, one that I just thought of with the full text, a benefit, is you could possibly run it through some kind of translation software. If someone that spoke a different language could translate portions of it. And that's not as easy to do with a video. The video we said offered advantages as well. Uh, first and foremost, the conclusion was is that the uh, emotion comes much clearer, comes through much more clear uh, in the video as compared to the text. The text, you know, the text is meaningful. If you read the, the text, it is moving, but it's not as moving as, as hearing the speaker speaking. In addition to a few other things that we got from the video is we got a sense of context. In other words, we could see all the people that were there. All right? We could uh, see how big of a crowd it was. We got a sense of when it was, based on the style of clothing and so on, uh, where it was, and so on. So the video kind of gives us, just non-verbally, some ideas of context. The full video, again, is good because it's comprehensive. The video excerpt might have the advantage of it, might be focused on the most meaningful parts. Um, these are three ways of doing it. In this class, we're going to study um, about five components associated with multimedia. We're going to study text. We're going to study images. We're going to study audio, video, and animation. Could we use all of these? in our page. Yeah, we could, right? Text, we already talked about an example of that. Video, we showed two examples. Audio, we could certainly have an audio of either the full or an excerpt. That would give you the emotion, all right? Would not probably not do quite as do a good job saying the context. In other words, you, you, know, you couldn't tell it was set in Washington, D.C. from just the audio. You wouldn't get a sense of how many people were there. But you would get the emotion, 
And the other advantage is, is it probably would be a smaller file in the video, so it might, might play faster. Um, images, you certainly could have one or more than one image. That might fill in the gaps of showing context, because you could show in the images the size of the crowd and where it took place and so on. All right, so that would sort of fill in some of the gaps that the text doesn't provide. Animation. Could we use animation? And if so, how? Yeah, you wouldn't necessarily, in this instance, especially if you're thinking of animation like, you know, like cartoon animation, you know. That, that really wouldn't be a good thing to, to, to do. It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't really uh, convey the emotion and, and that. But is there another kind of animation that we could do? Something that would be animation, but I'm thinking of something like a slideshow. I mean, a slideshow, I guess you could call... Uh, as some kind of animation, because the pictures aren't moving and all that. So maybe we could do some sort of slideshow. So we have a lot of different ways to tell the story. All right. One thing I want to focus in, and again, as I, as I went back and forth uh, in, in the first classes, I talked about how in multimedia development, you're really, in a way, wearing two hats. You're wearing the technical hat of how do I do something, all right? How do I manipulate an image to, to, to fix the contrast of it? Maybe it's the, the, the picture is washed out. How do I improve the contrast? So how do I edit it? How do I edit, edit an image to make it smaller? How can I put titles in front of a video and so on? There's all that technical stuff of how to use particular pieces of software. And, and that's certainly important. You certainly have to be able to execute it. But just as important is what I would call the design aspect of it. And the design aspect of it relates to everything about the way you're going to present it. And not just like what colors you're going to use and how it's going to look, but more like what elements are we going to use? What best tells our story? All right. Um, to a large degree, if you're figuring that out, number one, you better be sure you know what story you're going to tell. All right. And that sounds may be dumb or obvious, but with any topic, you could be presenting it, especially if you're presenting it to different audiences, you could be presenting it in a different way. For example, I think uh, when, when I talked about this, I talked about um, doing this like for high school students. But you might want to prepare a similar page for elementary school students, or for college students, or for the general public. Now. Who your audience is is going to impact what the story is you're going to tell and how you're going to tell the story. One thing that you have to keep in mind also is the goals that are involved. One thing that distinguishes design and multimedia from art, all right, is that with multimedia design, we're mainly interested in expressing someone else's viewpoint. You know, an artist typically is expressing their viewpoint, their perspective, their goals. You know, why did so-and-so paint that? They wanted to express something. All right? With graphic design, you're usually not expressing any of your thoughts. You're brought in to communicate someone else's thoughts to the rest of the world. All right? So maybe, in this case, you know, if I worked at a technology uh, branch of a school, the teacher would say they wanted a web page for this. And, this is, the, this is the points that they wanted to get. This is the goals that they would have of this page. And it would be my job to sort of bring that to life and to tell that story. The other thing you have to know about is the audience and their goals and their characteristics as well. Again, it will tell a different story depending on who your audience is. So now that we've identified all these different ways of uh, telling this story, what do you think? the best way to tell the story. If you had to create a page for high school students that discussed specifically this speech uh, from Martin Luther King, what would you include on the page?
First of all, would we include all, all of these things? Probably not. I, I thought I heard someone say no. All right. Why wouldn't we? If two things are good, how come ten isn't better? So it could become clustered. Yeah, it can become very cluttered. Um, remember that anything that you add on to a page um, has a potential to distract people from the stuff that's more important. All right. So therefore, if you know each one of these things could add some value to the page, possibly could have some good aspects of it, have some good characteristics. But that doesn't mean you use all of them, because by using all of them, maybe the slideshow would be neat, but maybe that would distract people from the video or the audio or whatever. All right. So one thing you want to be very careful about is you want to be selective and you want to deliberately choose what you're going to use and not just throw everything at the problem and say, well, we're going to communicate it that way. So we definitely want to make our choices as far as what methods we're using to tell our story. Again, that depends largely on the story that we want to tell and the audience. So in this particular case, I'll tell you what, take two minutes and jot down on a sheet of paper in your notes or in your head if you want to, take two minutes and jot down, if you're putting together a presentation for a high school class, one page web page for a high school class about the Martin Luther King I Had a Dream speech what you would include. All right, so take a minute, think of that. Here are some options. Then we're going to go around the room and see what everyone selects. Anything else? 
Okay, one thing that, that is good about this is really no one's throwing the kitchen sink at it. All right, everyone deliberately thought through, and if you notice, most people have two or three things, you know. Uh, probably the biggest one has text, a couple pieces of text, video. This one has text, video, and images. But still, no one said throw in an animation or audio or this or that. So it's, it's important to pick selectively. Almost no one picked, or no one picked, the full video. All right? And again, I think a good point was raised is that it's a matter of value added. All right, and it's a matter of keeping focus. What was the point of showing a video? We can show the text, certainly. All right, it might even be easier to read than easier to scan through than to hear. All right, what is the point of the video, though? The video conveys the emotion. All right, that's the main reason. It gives a little bit of context and it conveys emotion. That can be done just as well with a video excerpt as it can with the text, all right? I would think most all of the benefits that you could get from the video, you're gonna get from just choosing a few selected excerpts of it. So I would, I would agree with that. I, I would probably not use a full video. I would use an excerpt and use that to convey the reason I'm having video here, all right? Why would we have video? Well, again, because the text on its own doesn't have the impact, all right? The video is probably a better attention getter than to read through the text. Why not all the audio? Well, there's, the audio, well, there's video available, you know? The audio wouldn't really add anything that the video wouldn't already have, all right? So audio is kind of not really needed. Um, the main difference between these a couple people were a little more specific about what they would include in the text, all right? But is whether you include images or not. And I would think that that could be done well, or, you know, provided you didn't overkill with them. You know, a few images here or there uh, probably would be a very reasonable approach. Were I doing this, I would have an excerpt of the video, full text of the speech, or a link to full text of the speech, I could cheat because I'm making this up, right? Could be the full t a link to the full text of the speech, and then maybe an image or two. And I think that would be for um, the intended audience and the intended purpose, I think the way to go with this, the way to, 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 mo to, to best express the message, best tell the story that you would want to tell in a case such as this, all right? I think it's important right from the bat to start thinking things in those terms. And that is, who's your audience, all right? And what, what is it that they're looking to get out of this? And is there something you are looking to get out of this? You know, what, inf what information are you interested in pushing or portraying to the audience, all right? Um, so creating good multimedia isn't just about like doing dazzling video edits, all right? Or creating amazing animations or doing anything like that. It's knowing the right thing to do as well. And merging that together with the technical skills, I think really is what makes you a strong multimedia person, right? Um, you wanna be well-rounded enough where you know at least a bit about all these tools, all right? So you can pick and choose the ones that are right for the given situation. And not just say, gee, I don't know how to do video editing, so I'll put an audio clip up. All right, it's probably not uh, the best way to approach this. Any questions about this? You always have the you always have a lot of things to balance when you talk about designing and designing things. One thing is balancing between a lot of material and keeping things simple. For almost any project, there's a sweet spot, right? People said about it becoming too cluttered. All right, if you put too much, it's going to be cluttered. If you don't have enough, though, then it might be too simple. It doesn't go far enough to convey the information. So there's always going to be like that sweet spot of like what's the right amount of detail. And again, that's dependent on what story you want to tell, what the people viewing the page are interested in, what they're after. And lastly, um, you know, who the audience is. Same thing with keeping things basic versus doing innovative things, you know. 
There's probably all sorts of innovative things that you could do. Uh, not in this one so much, but but with more current events. You know, you you know, I've seen virtual reality cameras where you can you know look around. You could do something like that. Is it better to do something really dazzling and innovative or keep things simple? Again, that's a balance. You don't want to overkill on one side versus the other. All right. Um, I want to review your second assignment because your second assignment poses to you a problem that I want you to look at and come up with a solution to. All right? And that problem is a problem near and dear to most everyone in this area of the country anyhow this time of year, and that is the weather. I want you to design a one-page document to show weather information about the weather for Elyria, Ohio. And I want you to use actual data. So like if you start working on it, you know, on Wednesday, let's say, you know, get the temperature Wednesday, get the forecast for the next 10 days on Wednesday, get all the information from Wednesday's, you know, weather. You can go anywhere, but weather.com is a good place to go. So let's take a look at the assignment because um, there's a few points I want to make uh, about it. The point of this assignment really is to get you thinking in sort of a design mindset. And not a design so much as like how to make it look pretty, but the design aspect of what is the right information to include? What is the right information to exclude? So let's look at the assignment and then we'll talk about it. I'm asking you to do this assignment just in Word. So this isn't meant to be, you know, if you really want to do it in HTML, you're welcome to though, if you want to do that. But a Word document is enough. And here's what I want in this assignment. All right. Remember, in the context that we're working in, our job isn't to express our feelings or express our artistic vision. Our job is to communicate something. And therefore, it's always important to understand what it is you need to communicate. And when we're talking about things like this, you know, what the audience goals are and sometimes what the organ and, and also what the organizational goals are are important. So for our weather page, the first thing I want you to do is identify the top three goals a person might have for visiting a weather page. All right? Now, you may laugh, you may say that's obvious, that you go to the weather page to, to learn the weather. Well, uh, let's get more specific than that. Why would someone go and visit a weather page? Yes? So you know what clothing to wear. Okay. Um, my first assignment, I used the weather okay. .com as okay. um, a good example of, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, I like to ride a bicycle. Okay. And I, like, I want to know whether it's going to rain or snow. Okay. Uh, All right. So things like, how should I dress? How should I dress the kids? All right. Um, planning activities. I want to go for a bike ride. Should I do it today, even though it's 50 and drizzly, or should I wait till tomorrow, all right, where it might be 20 below and 10 feet of snow, right? So that's what I mean by goals, you know. You have to sort of dig deep and think, why would someone be visiting this page? What is it that they're trying to get an answer to? 
And not just like, well, they're there to get the information. Well, what are they going to do with that information? So that's a couple good things. Deciding how to dress, planning activities. Those are all good reasons for checking out the weather. What I want you to do is I want you to go through and think of and identify the three top goals that you think people would have for visiting it. All right. So you might brainstorm and, and put down six goals or, or something like that, and then go and choose of those six the three that you think are the most critical, the critical for most people, the most important. You know, um, you know, you may think of some goal that may be distinct to you, but you don't think necessarily a lot of people would share. In which case, yeah, that's valid. That's a goal, but you know, you need to prioritize. Um, one of the common drawbacks multimedia design has is when it tries to be too much. When it tries to be everything to all people. Um, if I can very briefly editorialize for a second, that's one thing that I think I don't like about Angel, our uh, application, is that, at least from the perspective of the instructor, it gives you so many choices of things that you could do that it makes it hard to do the things that I'm going to do on a daily basis, right? So I guess what I'm saying is, instead of saying, well, we're going to define 100 different goals and try to address them on this one page, Pick the ones that are most important. And again, where the other goals are solved or, or addressed, you know, that could be addressed somewhere else. So first thing I want you to do is identify these three goals. All right? Second thing I want you to do is for each of these goals, identify what content would help the users achieve their goals. All right? Let me give you a for instance in this case. If one of your goals is deciding what to wear to work tomorrow, content that would help you know that is what the temperature is going to be, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning when you get ready to, to, to leave for work, all right? So that's an example of something that would help you um, get the information that you need. Um, if you're planning on going on a bike ride, it might be less the temperature and more the wind precipitation, and so on. So for each of these goals, decide specifically what information would help you help the users achieve those goals. All right? So you have goals, then you have the things that you're going to do to satisfy those goals. Now those of you that had me for CISS 216, who had me for CISS 216? I know at least a couple. I'm not sure. Did you? Okay, which you don't. Was, which one was That's the yeah. intro to web development. Yeah. Then yes. I'm yeah. Now. Okay, you're in that now. Okay, this is very similar to what we do in this in that class, right? Because for the project, we do the same thing. You know, you, you identify the goals and what is it going to take to fulfill those goals. So this stuff, for those of you that are in my 216 class or have been in it, um, it should be familiar to you. You know, what is you want to achieve? How are you going to achieve it? I then want you to go to weather.com with your goals in mind and see how well they address those goals. Now maybe they do a great job addressing them. Maybe they don't do a great job of addressing them. So you know, go to weather.com. And put in Illyria's zip code. And say, I'm planning on going on a bike ride. Does this give me the information to know whether now is a good time to do it or not? Or will this information give me uh, the, the information I know about planning my exercise regime this week? Does this page do that? I ask you for an answer now. I'm just saying, analyze that. If you decided that's one of your goals, if you decided what to wear to work, does this give you the information you need to do that? Again, could be a yes, could be a no, could be a maybe. How easy or hard is it for you to get the information you need from weather.com to satisfy 
um, whatever your goal is. All right. So that is the third step.